in another arena, Congresswoman Stella, her struggles in pushing for an economic stimulus bill. We'd like to hear about that. My story is quite different from uh, the rest. Um, it's a story from the back line. So it has to do with um, uh, creating an economic stimulus package. So I was actually the first to file a bill uh, eight hours before the announcement of the first lockdown. So that was March 12th. And shortly after that, Kong Joey Salceda, also from Albay, um, filed uh, another bill. And after that, Speaker Cayetano um, formed an economic stimulus subcommittee chaired by three individuals, including myself, Rep. Sharon Garin, and of course, uh, Rep. Joey Salceda. So I would say it's a very, uh, it's a, it's a female-dominated uh, committee. So for, you know, it's two out of three uh, women. So, so uh, I would say that uh, there are a lot of like uh, advantages to having like uh, women pushing the economic stimulus package. And so, of course, I'm a, an economist by profession. So after doing all of the technicalities, et cetera, the biggest task really was in uh, uh, getting consensus, not only from the members of the house, but also from the various stakeholders. So we spent about like two months having extensive consultation with various stakeholders, meaning implementing uh, agencies from government, um, labor groups, business groups, the academe, church, etc. So we actually had like 41 Zoom meetings before we were able to come up with a committee report. And, and so that's where feminine uh, traits come in. I think that women, um, we do a better job dealing with inputs from various people. In other words, I think we do a good job managing dissent and debate. In other words, when they say like friction polishes a stone, I think women um, do that better than, than men. And so um, that was uh, the role of, of, of consultation. So anyway, um, and it's also the willingness to listen. In other words, um, and it's also related to what Bettina earlier said, which is humility, meaning you have to be humble in order to be willing to listen and using those inputs to actually um, tweaking the bill so it becomes more acceptable to all. And uh, let me just tell you, I, I'm sure Mary Tess, you know about this, that most of the time we met resistance from the economic managers, um, especially as, of course, the lockdown um, as, as the lockdown got longer and longer, of course, we were proposing a bigger and bigger economic stimulus package. And almost every step of the way, economic managers uh, would say, oh, that's not fundable. That's not doable. <laughs> and so, um, and it's very difficult to actually pass a bill that does not have support from the executive. But we actually managed to do so. I think it's, it's also, again, partly because, um, again, women traits, you know, we, we can never take no for an answer. Um, we actually, uh, we were able to get 280 co-authors. That was our way around it. We, we thought that um, building consensus in a big way would be um, the formula for success for this bill, and which actually turned out uh, to be so. But of course, as soon as we pass it on third reading, again, we hear the unfundable um, statement from, from economic managers. But I mean, you know, even up to today, we continue pushing. You know, of course, um, uh, the Arise Bill, which we passed last June, that's still going to be deliberated in the Senate. But um, there are small victories. Like, for example, uh, you can consider Bayanihan to a small victory in a sense that there's a little bit of money coming uh, from that. And uh, Sharon and I were actually part of the bicameral conference committee. So somehow we, we were able to, to input uh, onto that. Um, and up to today, so Rep. Sharon Garin chairs the Committee on Economic Affairs. We still have constantly on a regular basis, like two to three times a week, we still have consultations with various um, groups that are critically impacted by the pandemic. So we talk to like um, restaurant owners, um, uh, the fashion designers, the filmmakers, so many of the freelancers, for example, in the creative industry. So we've had many um, small meetings with them, e-huddles, and then meeting. We try to like sort of um, look for ways to help them, even if it's not uh, through the economic stimulus package. So um, 
So that's where we are at this point. Uh, the bills are there, but um, until, I mean, it's not over until the fat lady sings, right? Until we're able to bring um, a big enough um, economic assistance for all those critically impacted, of course, we won't stop. 